Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In this short video, I just want to do a side uh, topic on relative clauses because they involve a little bit of a complication over normal WH movement. Relative clauses are clauses that modify a noun phrase. Typically, they're attached to the noun as an adjunct, so they'll be a daughter of a bar, sister to a bar. But they also typically involve some kind of WH movement. So the most obvious kind of relative clause that involves uh, WH movement is, a, is one like the man who Alicia kissed, where kiss uh, takes an object, which is um, effectively the who here, but it's also the man, right? The, the Alicia kissed the man. Um, and the who is acting as what is often called a relative pronoun in traditional grammar. So how do we draw the tree for this? Well. We're going to have a structure much like the one uh, you have in front of you here. We have a DP where the the is in the D hat, and we have a noun phrase headed by man. And this uh, noun phrase is modified by a CP as an adjunct. Now what's going on in the rest of this is this um, modifying structure has um, a WH movement in it, which is what connects man to the rest of the sentence here. So um, it connects man down effectively into this object position, so we know it's Alicia kissed the man. And, and that's, uh, that connection is made by virtue of this who word. Now, uh, otherwise, this uh, sentence structure should look just very much like the WH movement that we have elsewhere. Um, the, uh, the subject of the relative clause has moved from the specifier of voice phrase into the specifier of TP for case and the EPP. Um, the who element gets its theta role down here as the complement to kiss. It also gets its case there. But because this is a plus WH structure, we, we, we see an operation of WH movement, which moves... Um, the CP up into this higher position. Uh, another thing you will notice about this is that it's minus Q because this is not really a question, right? A relative clause isn't a question, but it is a WH element. So this is a simple case. This is a case where we have a, um, an element uh, that's, that is overtly go undergoing WH movement. But we also find cases like the man uh, Alicia kissed, um, where uh, the man is being modified by what we call a bare relative clause or a reduced relative clause because there is no overt question word. What do we do about these cases? These, these uh, noun phrases with, with reduced relatives um, look very, very much like the ones with overt WH questions. Um, question words in them, but um, there isn't anything there. So what do linguists do when there's something that should be there that isn't? We propose a null element. And the null element we're going to propose here is called an operator. An operator is uh, effectively a null WH phrase. Um, the, the term operator comes from uh, semantics and logic. If you take a course in semantics and logic, you'll learn all about operators. But we're going to uh, propose that we have a null WH word here that is called op for operator. And for all intents and purposes, it functions just like the overt word who did in the previous noun phrase. Um, it starts down here as the object of kiss. Uh, it moves uh, at where it gets also gets its case, and it moves up here because of the plus WH. One of the reasons we want to propose this is because uh, we want to maintain the theta criterion. And the theta criterion says that all theta roles must be assigned, and KISS has a theme theta role. 
So if we don't uh, generate an operator here and uh, put it in, in and then move it up into this position, we violated the theta criterion. Man is not getting that theta roll. Man is going to get a theta roll from some other predicate um, because this is a noun phrase that might be embedded inside of another sentence. Um, to make things even more complicated, sometimes in cases like this, uh, we also get the word that. So the man that Alicia kissed. Now, sometimes uh, in traditional grammar, you will learn the distinction between restrictive and non-restrictive relative clauses. And uh, that is attributed to the difference between having a WH word in this position or having a, an overt that in this position. We're going to leave that distinction aside because it isn't so clear cut. And in fact, people's judgments don't really align particularly well with um, that, that classic prescriptive distinction between reduce, uh, sorry, re restricted and non-restricted relative clauses. So what's going on here? Well, in a sentence like this, we're going to propose that there is again an operator, a WH operator that has moved into this position, um, just like the previous noun phrase, uh, the man Alicia kissed. But what's different is that in this case, the complementizer is not null. The complementizer itself is spelled out as the word that. Um, now, normally it's the case when you, you can't have a, a WH element in the specifier of a CP that has a that in it. So in English, in English, in other languages you can, in English you can't say who that he left, right? So you can't, um, uh, you cannot have a that um, in those kinds of constructions. Um, but in fact, in other languages, for example, you would in fact have an overt um, complementizer in this position in most situations. For example, in Irish, that A with the superscript L that we talked about a few videos ago, it would appear exactly in this position. So that would show up in this position. Um, we even find examples of this in much older varieties of English. So here's a situation where we have an overt question word like which, and we have the that. Um, but your friend um, that you have lost, we have both which and that showing up in this older variety. And that, that supports this analysis where in modern English, um, the which has to show up as a null operator, um, but you can also have the that. Um, this particular restriction, the idea that you cannot have uh, both an overt WH word and an overt complementizer in English is called the doubly filled comp feature. Um, uh, it appears to be a property primarily of English. Uh, but that's what's showing up here. You have nothing, um, you, you have an overt complementizer, so you have a null um, WH element. So that's relative clauses. The critical things to take away is that there's at least three ways to form them. You can do it with an overt question word like um, who, you can do it with just a null operator, or you can do it with a null operator plus an overt complementizer. The uh, clause that's doing the modification is just a normal clause otherwise, and it sits inside of the noun phrase as an adjunct.